What's good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy M2K and today I have the craziest defensive settings for NBA 2K19. These settings are so crazy that I'm 100% sure that 2K is going to patch CPU defense for NBA 2K19. If they don't patch it, then this will be the defense that everybody's going to be using. Now in the last video, I showed you guys that I play 80% on the ball and 20% off the ball. But I decided to switch it around and play majority of the game off the ball because the CPU in 2K19 could lock down almost anybody on the perimeter. So instead of playing on the ball, I just decided to be the last line of defense and protect the rim if anybody got past the CPU, right? After doing this, I went from beating people by 15, 20 points to beating people by 30, 40, 50 points. All right, it's that effective, I swear to God. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, join the crew, and let me know in the comment section what video you guys want to see next. Now, let's get straight into the video. Now before we get into the settings, this is important to know because this is when you definitely have to play on the ball defense. So there's basically three things that you can do better than the CPU in this game, and that's transitional defense, post defense, and pick and roll defense. Those are the only three things that you could do better than the CPU in NBA 2K19, right? Transitional defense, you do this better than the CPU because you can determine which is the initial threat in transition, whereas the PC is mostly concerned with getting back to protect the rim. As you guys can see here, the PC is more concerned about getting back to defend the rim than he is stopping a three-point shot. So in this situation, this is where you want to play on the ball defense. The next one is post defense, and the CPU could do a number of things when guarding the post. They may foul, they may fall for a pump fake, or they might not even contest the shot. But if it's you guarding the post, all you have to do is keep your hands up, and that's a perfect contest. Also, a user contest is way better than a CPU contest, so they have a higher chance of missing the shot if you're the one having your hand up as opposed to the CPU having his hands up. And the next one is pick and roll defense, but I'm going to get more into that into the video. Okay, so these are the defensive settings we're going to use to get the most out of the CPU. For those of you guys that don't know what these settings mean or why I use it, you're going to have to go watch the last two videos that I posted. So for on-ball pressure, we're going to leave that as tight. Off-ball pressure, we're going to deny the ball. Force direction, force baseline. On-ball screen, we're going to switch. Hedge, we're going to leave that as automatic. On-ball screen center, we're going to switch. Hedge center, we're going to leave that as automatic. Stay attached, no. On-ball screen, we're going to put that as switch all. Post, we're going to front the post. Double team perimeter and double team the post, we're going to leave that as manual. Switch rules, we're going to switch all, pre-rotate, leave that as no. Screen help rules, no help. Drive help rules, no help. Now what you want to do is you want to go to the point guard, the shooting guard, the small forward, and the power forward, and you want to extend pressure. All right, here, extend pressure, yes, 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 and yes. The only one you don't want to do it for is for the center, all right, but I'll show you guys why in the video. Then you want to come out of there, you want to go to coach settings, and you want to take off adaptive coach engine, all right, make sure that is off. And then when you get on the court, you want to set physical defense and half court pressure. I know it seems like overkill, but watch how these boys go to work. Now let me show you guys how this works so you can sit back, relax, play off ball, and basically watch the CPU terrorize your opponent, alright? So extend pressure basically waits until the guy gets the ball inbound to pressure the ball handler. So as you guys can see, he meets him a little before the half court line to pressure the ball out of bounds. But we want the defender to be closer. So he could pressure the ball the full length of the court. So we select half court press so our defender could be waiting before the inbound pass is even made. And now the CPU basically has the whole length of the court to try to push him out of bounds or get him tired before he gets up the court. Now from just simply using half court press, we're going to get a lot of steals, bump steals, inbound steals. And even if the inbound pass is made, the ball handler will be pressured all the way up the court, draining their endurance and making it more easier for the PC to steal the ball. Also to get even more turnovers, what you want to do is to pressure the handler with the defender that's supposed to be guarding the inbound passer. That way we force the handler to get the ball out of his hand and because we're playing tight defense, we're going to get a lot of steals. So for example, as you can see here, I'm controlling Towns who is supposed to be guarding Nowinski. But instead I use Towns to force the PC to pass the ball and because we're playing deny defense, we're so close, we get that steal and you're going to get that steal 9 out of 10 times. Now deny defense makes it difficult for any passes to be made while being pressured because the defender is so close to their matchup, all right? So here's a perfect example. I'm Carl Anthony Towns and I'm supposed to be guarding Horford. But instead, I pressure the handler to get the ball out of his hands. And because everyone is being guarded closely, he only has one option to pass the ball to and that's Horford. All right, now he passes the ball to Horford, which is what we want because now we have a big man who can't handle the ball on the perimeter, all right? So the next option for the big man is to try to get the ball out of his hand. And again, because we're playing deny defense, right here, the CPU gets the steal. So that's why we have extend pressure and deny defense on at the same time. 
So the whole point is to get the ball out of the ball handler's hand and to get him to pass the ball to a power forward or a center, someone who just can't dribble the ball on the perimeter. All right, as you can see here, we do it again. We get him to pass the ball off to the power forward. He goes in the paint, and like I say, you want to guard everything in the paint. Post up, that's on ball defense you want to do. You just keep your hands up. He tries to pass the ball off again. We're playing the night defense, it's a steal. And with this type of defense, it's easier to anticipate to get a steal. Here, you see he's being pressured up the court. Everybody else is being played tightly. There's only one option. So we just sit back, wait until that pass is going to be made, and we get that steal ourselves. All right. Now, I'd say about 80% of the people I played online couldn't handle this type of defense. But this guy right here, as you can see, he doesn't make the pass. He calls Lillard to come for the ball because he knows everyone is being played tightly. So you will meet some people online who does know how to use the controls and to get players to come to the ball instead of making passes. Okay, now for pick and roll, we selected switch so we don't even have to worry about anybody getting a clear drive to the basket or a clear roll to the basket. This allows us to play more off ball. But make sure when you see a pick and roll happening that you're not the hedge defender or you're the guy playing on the ball. Let the computer do the switching themselves, alright? When the computer do the switching, there's a better chance of it working. McGee is screened. Down low. Alright, now just some quick tips before we finish the video. Since you're going to be playing off ball majority of the time, you're going to be caught ball watching, alright? And what's going to happen is that a lot of guys are going to be cutting back door behind of you and they're going to get a lot of open points because of it. Alright, so make sure pay attention to not just the ball but the person that you're guarding, okay? And also with the switch rules, alright, we have switch on pick and rolls. Like every other 2K, the defensive settings at times, they're broken. Even though you click switch, these guys PC like they always mess up sometimes they don't switch right as you guys can see they didn't switch here I go into settings I check it and it switch rules but they did not switch all right that happens a lot so if that is happening to you just go back to the old defensive settings I give you for pick and roll and use that with these settings as well okay and that's it for the high pressure defense now the question would be now which defense do I prefer right now if I'm playing play now online I use the last defensive settings but if I'm playing my team, I use this one. Because for my team, I could get people to quit quickly and climb the ranks. But for play now online, if I press the court like this, my guys are going to get tired and I'm going to have a problem scoring on the offensive end. Okay, but for my team, my bench, my starters, all of these guys can score. They, I don't have to worry about fatigue. You know, you're basically creating a god team, all right? So I do this for my team mostly. But for play now online, I'm using my old defensive settings. 80-20 on-ball defense, all right? But that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe for more NBA 2K19 tutorial. This has been your boy M2K, and I'm out. Peace. Round him when he's a free agent. And boy, it's hard because his free agency is the story in the NBA. Honestly, maybe the story in sports. The decision he made with this team completely shaped and shifted the outlook of the entire league. All other free agents and teams were just waiting to see what he'd do before the dominoes start to fall. Beyond the clock. Fade away. Misses off the right iron. Finley. Michael Finley. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. The mindset right now is pretty strong. Superb at staying aggressive. And they're just on the wrong end right now of a big run, and they need to plan how they're going to shift the momentum of the game. Here is Rogers. Over Porzingis. Here's Horford. And he drops in the way up off the glass. Horford's... Welcome back, everyone. A lopsided first quarter in the books already as we start this second quarter. And what stands out to you from Albuquerque in this one so far? And I, I felt like in that first period, the difference really was there. Rebound right there. Now, here's Chalmers. Knocks it loose. Just at time, but it drops. Peterson's got six. Well, Porzingis obviously is the man here and stepping into a leadership role, willing to share the wealth on that play. Here's Jokic. It's deflected. Towns down low. Down low. Good, and the assist goes to LeBron. Towns has got the lead up to 13 now for Albuquerque. 
at the elbow, Jokic. Here's James. That one falls, his second basket of the game. He's now two for three. Moving it around, eight of their last 10 coming off assists. And Finley gets it to go. Yep, the assist. Westbrook's got his first points in this one. It's tipped. It's stolen by Green. Deep two from Hill. Here's Williams. Jokic inside. And the rejection by Cousins. I like it, Cousins making impact on. Goodbye, Green. And Albuquerque leads by 19. They've been a little too casual with the ball out there. Yeah, but you can't force that. So it's Washington now following the score by Albuquerque on the wing, Johnson. And another miss by Washington. I'm shocked that didn't turn into three points. I mean, he makes you pay. 